Hello and welcome to Making a Canvas Strainer with John Deal. To follow along with me and this video you will need a hammer, nails and glue, a tape measure, a saw and a miter box, some F-clamps, a chisel, some tape and a speed square, don't forget your pencil, and finally one by two white pine and quarter round trim. Before I get started on building, I like to plan out my projects so that I know how much of what I'll need to complete it. For this video, I'll be making a two by three canvas strainer. First, I draw the outer frame and then the inner frame with the corner brackets. I usually only drop in braces every two feet, but for this demo, I've added one supporting the two foot sides so that I can show you how to cut in a lap joint. Now that I've drawn the frame, I need to figure out how much wood to buy. I tally up each of the different pieces. There are three three foot lengths and three two foot lengths. We've also got four corner brackets. We'll make them eight inches for this project for a total of 32 inches combined, less than three feet. The corner bracket will reinforce your corners and keep them square. Keep in mind that the lumber yard will only carry standard stocks of wood like six foot or eight foot lengths. So you need to work within these sizes and plan out your cuts accordingly. I like to draw a line to be the length of wood and then I can divide it up into the smaller pieces I need for the project. This helps me visualize my cuts. If I need three three foot lengths, I can fit two pieces into a six footer, which leaves one three foot length remaining. I can fit all of the two foot lengths into one six footer. Now I can fit all of my brackets in with my lonely three foot length, and there I have it. I didn't write it down here, but I'll also need about the same amount of quarter round. Just for reference, six feet is equal to 72 inches. Uh, three feet is, uh, 36 inches and 2 feet is 24 inches. Once I've worked out what I need, I'm off to the local hardware store or lumber yard to pick out my pieces. I need a total of three 6 foot lengths and the same in quarter round. I'll often buy one extra for good measure. Oh, and don't forget the nails and glue. Our next step is to prepare the lengths of wood. I'm using six foot one by two inch white pine and I'll be gluing on a section of quarter round to create the bevel. This will reduce any ghosting. Ghosting happens when your brush rubs against the edge of the wood and doesn't evenly lay down the paint, leaving a line. We're going to glue the quarter round to the one by two and use some tape to clamp it. Let's leave it to dry for a while and then we can get to building. Now that our glue has dried, we start by cutting off the end of our first piece. Place the end in the miter box lined up to the 45 degree marker on the right hand side with the high side of the bevel against the back like so. Clamp it to hold it in place. We want to cut this miter angled towards the inside of the length. We measure from the cut end so that we don't accidentally cut the length too short. Let's measure our first piece to 2 feet or 24 inches. Keep the beveled side against the back of the box and use the 45 degree slot on the left side to make this cut. This end is angled outwards, the wrong way. Line it up with the right hand 45 slot and cut. Since we're cutting two pieces the same length, I'm just going to line up the two cut ends, mark the next piece, and cut it to length, making sure that both ends angle in towards the center of the piece. We'll repeat these steps with the three foot or 36 inch pieces. Measuring from the cut end, we'll mark it at 3 feet. Here I'm using a speed square to get a straight line. Line up your wood and cut away. With the ends registered, we're going to mark the length on its paired piece. Clamping the piece in place and making our cuts with the miters always angled inwards towards the center. Now that we have all of the outer frame pieces cut, we can go ahead and cut four corner brackets. 
using a standard unbeveled piece, lay the wood down on its widest side and cut off one end. We'll measure to 8 or 9 inches and mark it. Using a speed square or similar, draw your 45 degree line, place it back in the box and cut. Repeat this process for each one. Just flip the wood over, trace our measurement onto the next bracket and cut. We want each side to be angled towards each other, not parallel, just like the outer frame. This is a little aside. Most wood saws that you buy in the store have a hidden power. You can use the angles on the handle like a square in a pinch. One will give you a 45 degree angle and the other a 90. We can check the accuracy with the speed square. I'm going to cut off the end of this piece that is ready for when we need to cut the cross braces for the inner frame. If you don't have a miter vise, we'll need to make a jig to help us square up the corners. This is a simple jig. We're going to cut a 3x3 three three inch square out of the corner. This is the factory cut corner so I'm more confident that the outside edge is square. We'll measure back 3 inches from the factory edge on each side and cut this part out. After this piece is cut, I'll measure back another 3 inches from the edge and make two more cuts for our second matching piece of the jig. The trick is making your cut straight. Using a miter or table saw would probably give you better results. Even a jigsaw with a fence would yield more accurate cuts. For our purposes, I just used a handsaw and then corrected any errors by whittling it down with a sharp knife until it was good enough. Here's a quick idea of how it will work. Before we start putting together the outer frame, we'll sink a couple of nails into the brackets just far enough to have the points peeking through the other side. Here's all of our bits and pieces laid out. Let's put away everything but our hammer, nails, glue, clamps, and of course the wood for our frame. With the smaller inner square of the jig fastened to the work table, place one two foot length and one three foot length into the jig, butting up their ends to make a 90 degree corner, as we see here. Then press the outside square against the corner and clamp it to the work table. Remove one of the sides and dab some glue on it, not too much or it'll quickly become a mess. Place it back into the vise and then clamp the whole thing together. This can take a bit of finessing to get it right. Once it's all done, we can drive two nails in on one side of the joint and one or two in on the other side. With a little glue on either end, we can nail in the bracket. I like to do this while it's clamped to ensure that we keep the corner square. I build each half first and then join those together. I find that this makes handling the pieces easier. Make sure that you keep the pieces oriented the same way for each half. For example, I placed each two foot length on the right side and each three foot on the left. This is important, otherwise they won't join up right and you end up making more of a weird diamond shape instead of a rectangle. You'll know you've gone wrong if the halves don't meet up correctly in the jig or vise. If this happens, you'll have to take it apart and correct it. Once you've joined all the sides together, you'll have your 2x3 outer frame. We need to support this frame, and we do so by putting in some cross braces. Butt up the end on the inner corner as close as you can, hold the brace parallel to the side and mark the cut end. Do the same with the adjacent side. Using a speed square, make a straight line at your mark. Line up the mark on the 90 degree guide on the box. Clamp it and make your cut. Do this for each brace. Next, we're going to figure out where to place the lap joints. The simplest way to do this is to lay the pieces out and mark where the braces overlap. Otherwise, we can measure out the lengths and calculate the center point. I prefer the latter for neatness and accuracy, but they will both do the job. First, we'll measure the length of the brace. In a perfect world, it should be the length of the respective outer side less twice the thickness of the stock. We'll divide the length of each brace by how many cross braces it intersects plus one. For us, it's only one. So 22 and a half divided by one plus one or two is equal to 11 and a quarter. Once we've marked the center point, we can use an off cut from the same stock to help lay out the cut lines. Roughly mark the center of the width. Line that up with the center point of the brace. Holding it square, trace each side and transfer the dimensions to the brace. Subdivide this one or more times as we'll cut a series of notches to make chiseling easier. Mark approximately halfway into the brace to guide you while cutting your notches. Repeat for each brace as needed. 
Clamp your brace in the miter box with the first mark lined up to the 90 degree guide. Try to get as close to the inside of the line as possible. Cut halfway down. Move down a bit towards your next notch and cut. Repeat if needed. Cut your final notch on the inside or right on the line. The more accurate your cuts on these ends, the more snug your lap joint will fit. Here's a side note about chisels. The direction of the cut follows the angle of the beveled edge. To get straight down action from this chisel, place the beveled side against the wood and angle the chisel away so the bevel becomes perpendicular to the material. Adjust this as needed. It's better to be a bit conservative here and start back from the base of the lap joint. Take your time and chisel away until you are halfway into the wood. A sharp chisel will be more accurate and make a cleaner cut. Next, we need to clean up the joint. This will improve the glue bond. Clamp the brace to your work table to reduce any movement. Always keep your hand behind the chisel and away from the action. Never place your hand in front of the chisel. If the chisel happens to skip or glance off the material, it could easily stab your supporting hand. With the flat side of the chisel facing up, slowly carve out the rough parts of each joint and make it smooth. We're almost done now. Let's match up the two pieces and glue them together. If you wish, you can hammer in a short nail or two to keep them tacked. Then we're going to fit them into the outer frame, glue, and nail them in place to finish assembling the whole frame. Using your supporting hand and arm, put some pressure on the frame to pinch and secure the cross braces while you fix them in place. And there we have it. One 2x3 foot canvas frame made in a garage with everyday tools and materials that should be available at most hardware stores. It might take a few tries to really get the hang of it, but it becomes second nature after that. Next we're going to learn how to properly stretch our canvas or linen to get a nice surface to gesso and then paint on. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you found this video instructive and helpful in your future projects. Until we meet again. If you want to know more about the technical world of art, like and subscribe.